Calcanthite is the mineral of today's topic, and it's got the chemical formula of CuSO4 5 H2O. So that means it's a pentahydrate because it has five water molecules, right? And it's a copper sulfate because it has copper and sulfate. The copper actually bonds to the sulfate um, because the sulfate is is um, in in the acid mine drainage. And it uh, bonds really readily with the copper. And because there's also water present, it's it, it readily absorbs that water very, very quickly. It also forms pre- pre- predominantly in, in arid environments. You're not going to find this mineral in, in humid environments. Um, what happens is it, uh, it'll rain, it'll collect the water, or I'm sorry, it'll rain, it'll dissolve. And as the, the environment gets aired again and it drives up, it dries up, it precipitates again and creates little crests of crystals. So some of the crystal habit of this particular mineral is actually in the form of just crusts um, on even mine walls and things. And I, I want to try to find a picture of it. I haven't yet because I think it would be really, really, really interesting to find blue coated walls in a mine. I thought that would be pretty interesting. Um, but that's one of the ways this is a precipitate. It, it does form as a secondary mineral. Yeah, I am. Yes, it is. That's why I'm wearing gloves, because it is a toxic mineral. You cannot link it, Mikachu. It will actually cause some some problems. Yeah, copper mines. Copper mines, specifically. So this has got, uh, it technically has three planes of cleavage, which means that it breaks preferentially at the atomic scale when under pressure or stress. That's basically a sy- synonym here. St- under, under stress, it's going to break... Um, And in this case, it's going to break brittily. And it has one imperfect to fair cleavage plane, and the others are almost indistinguishable. Um, And it otherwise fractures conchoidally. So it fractures, again, like glass, like a lot of of minerals actually actually fracture conchoidally. Glass, obsidian, uh, which isn't a mineral, it's a rock. Quartz is a mineral, not a rock, and it fractures conchoidally as well. I mean, I imagine you'd have to be kind of sweaty, and then when you touch it, it irritates your skin slightly. It's a skin irritant. Uh, and an eye irritant. If you eat it, it can cause um, hemorrhaging and um, other issues. But as a skin irritant, I don't think it's super, 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 super dangerous. I would just rather people be safe than not safe. I have super sensitive skin on top of that. So for me, because it says it's a skin irritant, I'm not going to, I'm not going to risk it. Just be better at that. And then I forget things and I'll go play with my cats and I just would rather not risk it. Triple cleavage. You can have actually four planes of cleavage in certain minerals. Conchoidally means that it fractures. Um, uh, so you can have minerals fracture in a in a hackley pattern where it's just really rough and there's really no shape to it at all. If they fracture conchoidally, it's going to be very smooth and rounded, um, like, like obsidian would fracture or glass. If you break a bottle of glass, you'll see a lot of those rounded... Um, uh, broken pieces that's that's just naturally how it breaks because there's no crystalline structure or no preferential way in which it'll break rather so its hardness is very 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 soft it's only got a hardness of of 2.5 so you can scrape this one with your fingernails so it's one of the ways in which you can identify this um its color um ironically isn't a bad identifier because it doesn't really change it goes from blues uh light blue dark blue maybe greenish blue um into pale colors so color again isn't the best uh way to identify it but this particular color is honestly pretty striking and um um and its hardness will be another indicator or i guess if it irritates your skin but i'll pull up the health uh, i have a chart of health issues that this mineral has caused in the past and we'll look at that as well uh the streak is white which means if you literally were to pulverize this mineral or to streak it along a plate, it would be white in color. This is a uh, one way that we identify minerals. Um, its luster has to do with how much light is transmitted, absorbed, or reflected off of the mineral. And this one is pretty shiny, so we call it vitreous. A little less shiny, we call it resinous. So it can be kind of resinous, maybe not as shiny as uh, quartz in some cases, but and shiny uh, i'm sorry quartz can be resinous as well in some cases too but uh, it's just an example of that the crystal system is triclinic that has to do with the planes and the angles uh that the shape actually forms in 
We've already talked about this, but it's a sulfate, and that's because uh, SO4 is in it. Um, it forms in oxidized copper zones, but specifically rapidly oxidizing copper zones. Um, and it and it usually forms because you're digging up a lot of this material and it bringing it to the surface. Um, it can form, and God, what was the other environment it can form in? I forgot, but I've got it written down. It can be used in industry only if it's found in large quantities, but it's typically not found in copious qu quantities. In Greece, apparently it is, but but uh, otherwise it's kind of just a byproduct in um, ore areas. It's very toxic. It's soluble in water. It also dehydrates if the air is slightly humid. Um, I'm not actually sure how humid it has to be for this particular mineral to turn into a powder, but that's actually what happens when exposed to humidity. It eventually um, forms a, a light powder. Well, a, it would be white because the white is, the, the streak is white. Um, and you don't want to inhale that. That's going to be really, really toxic. So there's, there's a lot to this mineral in that you're going to have to store it if you have this because the air can interact with it. Water can interact with it. So you're going to want to have maybe somewhere dry to keep this. No, you have not seen it under the microscope camera yet. This is a new one that I got that I haven't even been able to play with until a couple nights ago because I got gloves. Yeah, yeah, glassy. Glassy would be kind of synonymous with vitreous and minerals. Yeah, superb. No, it's actually the copper, Abel. It's the copper that's toxic. In this case. I'm sure the sulfur isn't good for you, but I don't. In this case, it's the copper specifically that'll give you poisoning. Oh, it does come from the Greek meaning of uh, calc. Calcos anthos, which means copper flower. So I thought that was kind of cool. And it does honestly look a little bit like a flower. And you'll see it when I open it up. Oh, oh, um, that's another really cool. So a cool thing. So if you if you in human regions where they mine copper, this mineral will form if it gets arid randomly. But then as soon as it as crusts, but as soon as it rains again and gets humid again, it just kind of washes away. But only when it gets when it gets really dry, it precipitates in small crusts along uh, along mine walls. Um, so of course, it's found in larger environments and arid environments, um, larger quantities in arid environments. It's here's a really cool thing about it because it's so blue. Not just because it's so blue, but because of the copper in it. When you dissolve this in water, and you can very very easily, it turns anything you dissolve it in blue. It could actually be used as a dye because of that. And I don't know if it's been used as a dye in, in the past. I didn't see anything about that. But it um, it can dye materials, um, various materials. So um, co uh, conversely, because you can dissolve it so easily in water, you can also allow it to re-precipitate as a mineral again, if you were to dry it, uh, allow the water to evaporate. So you want to store the mineral, in, of course, in an arid container if you do get this mineral. Um, also, because it's so easy to grow this mineral, it's it's uh, it's a problem when buying to look for non-synthetic calcanthite. You can find um, you can find synthetic calcanthite that is apparently on the market, especially online. So be wary um, when or where you buy it, because I'm sure a lot of the more tinier shops like Etsy and things they may not be actually getting actual calcanthite that's naturally produced and they may not even know that it's not natural so i don't know where along the line or who's producing it but it's potentially being synthetically produced so now you know oh it's also a member of the calcanthite group which does include uh, a couple of other minerals that are uh, analogous to this one just it has instead of copper it has um iron or manganese or or magnesium um or a couple of other things that i've can't remember off the top of my head. All right, so now we're gonna we're gonna finally get into this this mineral that I haven't been able to play much with. They really really uh, close this in quite nicely. Actually, I'm going to leave it in this box on this container here. So there's the little calcanthite. There's a little guy.
I don't want to smell it. I'm scared to smell it. It is very pretty. Um, one of the things we're going to see with a microscope camera is part of the mineral where it's basically dissolved a bit. Um, and that's actually part of the reason I don't want to smell it. It's powdered, not dissolved, but it's it's oxidized and powdered a bit. Um, their lighter areas, the white areas on there, I believe, have reacted to the air. I don't know if uh, this is how I got the mineral. And this was how it looked. So I'm not upset about it or anything. But uh, it does worry me. And I don't want to, I don't want to. It can be, it can be an irritant, so I'm not going to. I already know what it is. It's not like I need to. So I'm going to do this really quick. I just want to adjust the focus. But you see the white powdery areas? Those are areas that have likely been exposed to some humidity. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just don't want to touch this one. It can be a skin irritant. I didn't want to smell it, Big Max. It's got some uh, areas where it's been re it's reacted to um humidity and 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 dissolved not dissolved but powdered up powdered up a bit in liquid form this is used as a fertilizer thank you oh yeah i'm not smelling it people kept asking me to and i'm like no it looks like it's been it's been uh it's reacted with the environment all right all right all right all right all right, all right. i want to use my microscope camera with this one but it's a very nice mineral it's a really really nice size mineral i need to store it somewhere though for sure I'm really glad that I got this because it's a it's a nice exercise to show people just how pretty things can be and yet, you know, they can be be dangerous. But this was the roses give the, the name was given by Greek for um, copper flower. And you can see it, it actually kind of looks it looks kind of like a flower. I'm not even going to put this on my desk out of the box because I just the cats somehow sometimes still get in here. And I I need to be really, really careful for that reason. But this area looks like it might have been uh, exposed to humidity a bit. And especially this part here, the white part there. Let's use this to see some of the... That's a good idea, drop bear. Is that big enough? Can you guys see that okay? So now we're gonna look at it up close. So this is the area that likely looks like, oh yeah. It's starting to alter on the surface there. But that blue is just pristine. I wonder if those little yellow Chunks there are pieces of sulfur. Isn't that crazy? Let's go to another area. Damn. Oh, I want to look at this yellow here. Might be sulfur. It's hard to say. Oh? What's in here? Ooh, what is that? So curious. Some more of it over here. Cheese! Yeah, it's probably sulfur. It does. It looks probably. I've just never seen it so acicular like that, which is these uh, needle-like bands. Damn. So that is not. Well, I mean, it could be calcanthite. It can be a palest greenish blue, but that's more yellow, dude. Uh, and it doesn't. The calcanthite doesn't form a acicular habit. Um. And I don't know if native sulfur does, but I know calcanthite does not. Calcanthite forms tabular shapes, massive shapes.
prismatic crystals in some cases. Jesus Christ. Oh, this has got some interesting coloration. There can also always be inclusions, probably. I would say that this is likely not a uh, piece grown in a lab. If this was found somewhere. Then, then we can go really up close. Usually works. He doesn't want to. There we go. Now we can go really, really close. This is even closer. This is closer to a thousand times magnification. Let's see what this stuff is over here. This is interesting. What the fuck? Just doesn't look like sulfur to me. At all. That's fucking cool, though. Look how so tiny that is. No smell test will be conducted. This is not the mineral to do that with. No, no, no. This is so cool. This is so cool. Very cool. Kind of asbestos like it. It's like a xenomorph nest. I don't know. I really don't know. We can look at minerals that occur with it and see... Oh, fuck. I need to put this away first. Shit. Ah! All right. I want to look at... Uh... Oh, long-term uh, storage of the mineral. So calcanthite can look especially spectacular. Mine is not this resinous. However, um, God, you can even see bits of that white in and out of here, but in here too. It's like dust. It's like dust on the... Oh, interesting. And I wonder if this is what it looks like if it's exposed to humidity. No, that's a that's the magnesium variety. Does the sub override regular benefits? Yes. Um, it could be uh, due to the reaction of just water in the atmosphere, um, which is most likely what it is, to be honest, which is why you shouldn't smell this mineral. It's a very toxic mineral. You shouldn't handle this mineral. And this is why we're going to go over that right now. So I pulled up some stuff from ToxNet. Uh, to determine 
what all was going on with a specific thing. And then I found toxicity in a variety of cases in birds, dogs, domestic animals, and uh, sh- goats and sheep, um, duck, guinea pigs, humans, unspecified mammals. Man, man, man. Not a human, just man. Mouse, pigeon, pigeon, rats. Um, irritated their skin orally, interceptionally. Uh, orally, this was unreported. Under the skin, orally, 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 orally. So most of these people or things, animals, ate it, um, which caused comas. It caused um, depressed activity, diarrhea, hemorrhage, hemorrhaging. Just, I mean, gastro tests, a lot of issues. A lot of issues, kidney issues, urethra issues, gastrointestinal changes, more coma. <laughs> so it's it's not a good thing. Um, you don't want to mess with this without maybe taking precautions and maybe making sure you're wearing proper safety. Uh, don't smell this mineral. Don't uh, buy it and just keep it out because it will react with the atmosphere and slowly dissolve, allowing that powder to get into the to the air if handled poorly. And you can inhale that, which wouldn't be good. So don't do that. Um, don't eat it. Don't lick it. If you handle it with your hands, wear gloves. So that's why I wanted to show this to you guys. Um, it's pretty, and it's called Copper Rose. But, like every rose, has its thorns. Ha 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 I should quit. <laughs> Jesus Christ. No, you don't need to lick this one. This one's even worse. No! Yeah, you could dissolve it in the water too. It'll it'll dissolve very, very easily in the water. But this is, you know, it can look quite pretty in a variety of ways. Oh my gosh, this actually looks kind of like selenite. Well, that makes sense. Selenite's also uh, an, ev- an evaporite. Yeah. It's gypsum, a variety of gypsum. They're all out of bubblegum. <laughs> all right, all right. I want to look at this other one. But remember, this is a copper sulfate. Ooh. Wow. That is very vitreous. That must be a very zoomed in image. That's, And of course, we looked at this one. I want to look at my other minerals after we go through more information on this particular one. And I'm going to show you my, my other toxic minerals since I've got all this stuff out for it. Um, actually, because I'm going to want to take pictures of this since I've already contaminated everything, I need more gloves. I've only got one more pair of gloves. Um, it's a copper analog of citratoil and pentahydrite. Um, it is a pentahydrite. So this is, I'm a little bit confused by this, to be honest. Uh, I think this is everything we've talked about already. This is microscopy stuff that I can't really show you guys because I don't have a microscope. Um, if you want to see other minerals it's associated with, the list just goes on, on and on and on. So we're going to skip that. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Hazardous in case of skin contact irritant, of eye contact irritant, of ingestion, of inhalation, acute oral toxicity. So please... Please, please, please. This is the uh, the link that I use to find that other piece of information. So you can literally use Mindat and check this out for yourself if you want. You know, in hindsight, I really shouldn't be eating in here. At least not tonight. But... It's on a different desk. Let's see here.
Mm. He's a little baby. He's a little baby. Oh. We never use a hundred times. Oh man. That's with cross polars there. That's some minerals with cross polars there. A free sounding rod. Fuck yeah. Oh, look at those look at that uniaxial uh, interference figure. That's sexy. Holy shit, that's sexy. Oh, it's biaxial? What the fuck? How is that biaxial? Oh, this is uni... No, this is uniaxial. This is biaxial. What the fuck? That's fucking cool. This guy. This is the guy I know. I mean, I've used this one, I believe. I don't know. Just a picture? Come on, Leica. Oh. Yeah, this is the guy I've used. I don't know how to find out. Too fitty. It's too fitty. Hmm. I mean, that's not a bad one to teach with, but I'm sure. Oh, wow. Oh, I want every one of them! <sighs> and all of them! All of them! Yeah, Bumbly did it. What? Oh. I can't see them. It's not here. It's not here. I don't want a binoc. I don't know where it is. Yeah, I don't think so. I was hopeful, Street OG, okay? 5K a bargain. Oh, yeah, my my microscope that I want, 2 to 3K. I thought it was more expensive than that. It says, give us a call, then we'll talk money. Oh, oof. Yeah, I'm never getting that microscope. Maybe someday. It's one of the big things that I want. Yeah, I I can go and see what the ones on the university here are. I want to find out the one in um, my lab was. Ideally, that would be great. Yeah, the catalogs with the ones with no price in them are the ones you're like, mm, I probably can't afford this ever. Ever. All right, let's keep going. I got distracted with microscopy excitements. Ooh. I just want to see this. That's a pretty piece of calconfite. I 
I would say if you see calcanthite with other minerals, then it's probably not synthetic. Um, we've looked at that. We've looked at this. Now we've got that. Uh, this is the mine that this sample was found from. The Kam Ariza dump in Greece. And uh, I've never been there. I don't know what it's like there. But apparently this is where the sample is from. The, the large dump northeast of the settlement of Agios Constantinos was started in 1926 and famous among collectors. It was primarily used to dump post rock and ore that was too low grade for processing. Later was also used as an interim storage facility. The material initially came from the Hilarion Adit, but later waste from all other mines, and the area was dumped there, especially Christiana material. Hence, the entire suite of minerals described from nearby mines can be expected to be found there. And then I thought, well, what other mines are in the area? Turns out there are quite a few, and here's one. Um, no, 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 never mind. This is, a, this is one from Chile that I was looking at for other things. But we can go back. And uh, localities here, again, on the, the Mindat page for Calcanthite, you can go through and come on, load, load, load. Going to go up to Greece and check out what else is there, because I like the sample that I have. And this is cool. So you've got 21 areas here, 21 mining facilities that you can find, right? Let's see, there's eight here. I just want to, let's check this one out. And it'll give you the details on this particular mine, the Alafos mines. So they've got hematite, calcite, allophane, and I'm sure a list of other things. So I think these are all of the minerals that they'll they'll find there. But it's cool because if you want a specific mineral and you want to know in an area that you may be able to find it, you can use Mindet for this as well. Which is pretty cool. So I just wanted to show you that. It's one of my, my favorites about Mindat. Uh, the other minerals. So then you get the, the calcanthite group. So the calcanthite mineral itself is part of a group of minerals. Um, one of which is pentahydrite. And calcanthite. Uh, calcanthine, calcanthinite, it, oh my god, I can't even say it anymore. The mineral itself is also a pentahydrite, but there's also a mineral with that name, and it's magnesium rich. So these are the group members of this specific group, of, of the calcanthite group. I'm going to zoom in for you guys, if I could. I was on the wrong tab. Really? Are you fucking kidding? Why? Just go to zero. All right. This is uh, copper zinc. Oh, there we go. I don't know why it's Doing that, it's great. Please stop, okay. Why is it doing this? So the other other minerals in the in the calcanthite group include belogubite, which is a copper zinc analog. Calcanthite obviously is the copper one. Um, Yoko. Kite, I don't know actually how to pronounce that, is the manganese uh, sulfate, a hydrosulfate. Pentahydrite, although it is in a group of pentahydrites because penta is just five and this just means um, it has five water molecules in it. But they've also used this name for this specific mineral that's of uh, manganese, um, rich in manganese. And then you've got sideratoil, sideratile, teal, sideratile, I'm thinking, uh, which is its iron analog. Uh, and it's funny that they use siderer as the beginning because siderite is an iron carbonate. I'm wondering if sitter means iron in some language. Pages? For Danish, for pages, wonder if it's Greek. For Latin, stars. Sidero means stars. Oh, and iron, so it's Latin. It's a Latin base. Sidero, not sitter. Sidero means iron. That's cool. I just learned something because of two uh, prefixes and a mineral name. Yay! How do foods have the same minerals found in rocks? Um, 
they absorb them when they grow because we and plants need them, right? And that's not a stupid question. Yeah, they, I mean, it's, if you think about it, this mineral alone is used for fertilizer. This copper sulfate is used for fertilizer. So that's sulfur and copper being absorbed into plants, right? And they're nitrogen, many others that are used for fertilizer. I don't know. I'm not a, I don't know what everything is used in fertilizers, but all those minerals infiltrate the ground via water. And then those plants via the roots absorb them and use them. I'm not a biologist, but that's that's how they that's how they would be used and absorbed. So they wouldn't be minerals anymore in the sense of geology. They're not like absorbed in little chunks, if that makes sense. Yeah, from the soil or however that specific plant grows. Some plants grow in um, different environments, so it just depends on that particular plant and or animal. Yeah, there are always minerals in water as well, naturally. If you get if you water from uh, mountains, fresh mountain water, it's going to have tons of minerals just because of all the erosion and weathering on the mountain and any tiny elements it's picked up. Um, and this actually goes into water contamination. Depending on the host rock, you can have contamination in water bodies. So uh, naturally and unnaturally, if people contaminate bodies of water as well. Are there always water and minerals? Not always. Um, but even the minerals without water in their formulas can actually trap them as they grow. Quartz can con contain in inclusions, for example, that uh, can be um, solids, can be gas, and can be liquid. Um, and usually the liquid is water with whatever other ions are in there that didn't precipitate into a mineral. Many minerals you imagine are brought into various biologic forms. Exactly. Oh, oh, um, a great example of this would be shells, calcium, uh, or silica. Exoskeletons are oftentimes uh, silica for tiny, tiny critters in the ocean. And uh, you get exoskeletons of calcium in uh, shells oftentimes, too, of oceanic critters. When those die, they bond with things. For, for example, calcium produce, produces big bodies of limestone, which is rich in the mineral calcite, calcium, and carbonate. They bond. Pretty cool stuff. So it can go back into making minerals too. And then back into the organics. And that way it's cyclical. Yeah, like clamshells. Exactly, Street. Aragonite. Yep, the polymorph of calcite. That is also correct, Albel. Oh, they are literally grown like our nails or our hair, Street OG, from what I understand. And this is getting into some biology I don't understand, but it's also historical... Geology has given me a little bit of a background on at least the index fossils to some extent. Um, and they just grow like our hair and nails, essentially. Yeah. Yeah, because there's a lot of um, ions floating around in the ocean. Cerrito G. A lot of them. Biology is pretty cool, too, Axe. I, I, I agree. Again, if any of you like the educational content that you see here, try uh, try the Knowledge Fellowship Discord. Tons and tons of educational content creators. You guys will like it if you like this stuff. I promise. Really, really good people out there. Tons of different, uh, tons of different uh, groups of information, topics. Jesus, brain. Maybe yesterday's stream zapped me. It just zapped me of all my energies. It's always great to have you, Street. Um, let's see if there's anything else I want to say about this. Uh, but, 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 but this is the generic formula, M just being... Um, yeah. Oh, oh, here we go. The cations. So they actually spell it out for us. So they give us the various cations that are that can replace M. So M is just a, is a variable. It's an arbitrary variable that can be any one of these four uh, cations. So magnesium... Copper, manganese, iron, and I thought there was another one. Oh, and zinc. Zinc and copper. Zinc and copper together can also be. But apparently not zinc on its own. And again, the areas you can find it. 
God, there are actually quite a few. But there's, I mean, anywhere you've got copper forming. Also, the, uh, let's see what else I've got. So, Sideratoil is one of those minerals in this group that it talked about. If we go back to this page, got pentahydrite as well. Sideratoil, pentahydrite. I can't pronounce. Um, Belogubite. Belogubite. I want to use that for a name for some Belogubite. Name a dog that or something? Nah. I'm naming a dog, Bronton. Uh, Yoko Kuwait, maybe is how it's pronounced. But Belogubite. I like zinc a lot. I think it's cool. So this is Yoko Kuwait. This is another calcanthite uh, member. Pink. Does that look? Um, 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 yeah, that doesn't look pink. Got yellow in it a little bit. That's white. Yeah, it says it's pink. Usually gives a list, like if it said pink and white, I would say, okay, there are varieties of this that are pink and we are just don't have pictures of them. That's fine. Whatever. It's also the same hardness. Wonder if it's also toxic. No information on health risks. This doesn't even have a... Images. That's it? There's one place for it? In Russia. One place in Russia you can get this mineral. Okay, I'm suddenly more intrigued in this in this one. Yes, opal is a naturally occurring thing. It's an amorphous mineral that forms. It's actually a mineraloid because it's amorphous and doesn't fulfill the requirement for being a solid. There are five requirements for minerals. Four or five, depending on if you lump one together. Um, one of those requirements is that it has to be a solid because it isn't a solid. Technically, it's amorphous. It is a mineraloid. But it is naturally occurring, and it is an inorganic, and it is SiO2, but it has water in its formula. So it's a hydrous form of, of kind of, you could think of it kind of as a hydrous form of quartz um, because they're both SiO2. The difference with that, with opal, is that it has multiple... Um, molecules of water in its crystal lattice, which also yields to that opalescence in the and when we see it with the light, um, it causes really strange refractions with the light when the when you when you expose it to plain light. Does that answer your question, Street OG? Right, that's so totally white, Jandra. Yeah, according to this, my hair is also white. Hydrofluoric acid is nasty, nasty stuff. Yeah. Hydrofluoric acid is really, really dangerous. And we do use it in some geology labs. So those are the labs you keep really, really locked. Oh, so this one is to be confirmed. Oh, whoa. It's... Did I say... Oh, my God. HCl is hydrochloric acid. Hydrofluoric acid is what I was saying with an F. As in fart or fuck. Those are two things I shouldn't have said back to back. <laughs> Sideratoil is another one in this group. It's the iron member. Oh, silky. Luster silky. I'll be the judge of that. It's kind of hard to see when you can't see the light bouncing off. Sideros means rock. No, iron. It means rock. It means iron. That's right. We just determined that. Tilos means fiber. Oh, interesting. It's also the same hardness. And it's also hydrate. And finally, the pentahydrate. Why they call this one? And did you, and by the way, this is a, a pentahydrate, right? A sideratoil has five, so it's a pentahydrate. This one has 10. So why is... Oh, but this one is yet to be confirmed. I'm just confused as to why that one's in the group. I thought it was based on the 
well, not just based on the water molecules, it was also based on this being a sulfate, but that's a pentahydrate. And this one's, we already know. Oh, wow, this is from Calif Alameda County in California. Locked down Alameda, shuffle in my deck of trick car. All two and a half. They all have the same hardness. Very in uh, vitreous or in luster. And apparently one that's white is called pink. Maybe it's just a typo. Interesting. Okay, I actually do want to try to find this and see if uh, there are actual pink varieties. Oh, look it, it's dissolving. Um, yeah, this doesn't look pink to me, except maybe that. Anyway. All right. So do you guys have any questions about calcanthite, this very toxic mineral, before I show you some of my other toxic minerals? And uh, before I do that, I might actually go into the learning scene because we're not going to be talking about calcanthite. We're going to be talking about other minerals. Tox toxic minerals. Okay. Does that work? All right. Let's do this. More science. So this is our lovely cinnabar, which is a mercury sulfide. Not sulfate. This is a sulfide. The other one we looked at was a sulfate. But there's that cinnabar. There she is. That's fucking spectacular. God damn it, I wish I could take pictures right now. Ooh, we can see what this matrix is now. Maybe. It's just crap. It's quartz, probably. Oh, look, it's my desk. Whoa, it's so cool. Uh, the onesies, there is a list of them. Honey, uh, or, or, or somebody in here, do you have a, there's a, oh, fuck. There's a red panda, there's a koala, there's a kangaroo. There's another little cinnabar chunk in there. It's a mercury sulfide. There's a uh, rainbow one. Ooh, that's vitreous. All my favorite minerals are vitreous bitches. I think it's a hexagonal mineral too, if I remember correctly. So see how very tiny that guy is though? See how tiny that cinnabar is? That little tiny red chunk right there? That's it. That's our cinnabar. Right there. That tiny, tiny chunk. If we look at it. God, that's so pretty. Not gonna lick it. Some of the white matrix that it's on. It's really weird. This is some wolfenite. This is a lead, uh, a lead bearing mineral. I just realized the colors are all fucked up on this camera right now. How the fuck? The actual fuck just happened to this camera. <laughs> 